Hey guys, welcome and ting and ting and ting. Back with another video for you all, and uh, someone suggested that I watch this here, so you know, we're gonna go ahead and watch this. Hey, how you guys uh, like my hat here? All colorful, tropical style and thing, huh? Yes, sorry. Okay, this one is called uh, Ustasa Genocide Against Serbs, a short history documentary. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and watch this here, see what this is all about. Let's YouTube and Sim Sim. Convert a third, deport a third, and murder a third. This was the policy of the Ustasha in dealing with the Serbs within their borders. The Ustasha was the name given to the fascist movement that aimed to create an independent Croatia in Yugoslavia. When the Axis powers of Nazi Germany and fascist Italy invaded the region, the Ustasha set about ridding the area of Jews, Serbs, and Roma in a bid to build a pure Croat state. The levels of violence employed by the Ustasha would be so extreme that it even shocked- Okay, I have a question. And, and this is not a, a knock or a criticism. It's a simple question here. As far as this is the first to see going right into it here, there was a, a, a systematic extermination of Jews, Serbs, and Roma. So here's why I say this, okay? I, uh, in that period of time, there was that uh, systematic, well, it's, it's a genocide. But uh, here's what I don't understand, because from the comment section, I noticed a lot of people saying that uh, a lot of the prejudice there is, in that region, there is against the Roma people. But you got the same faith. You see what I'm saying? You all were in the same group of people that was singled out, that was thought to be undesirable. So how come, and I'm going with the comment section that I get on videos about the, 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 the Roma people. What is the deal with that? Why is there a divide when there should be a sort of understanding of each other seeing that you had the same sort of a history going on? Uh, with the genocide and as recent as that i don't know if that question makes any sense or anything like that but you know that's just an observation going well hey we have that in common what's the problem is it you or is it some other force you know what i'm saying and here's the thing uh, here's what i think hey from my own observation Money is the root of all evil. If people gonna make uh, people gonna make money, they're gonna or like for instance the slave trade. Everybody's been slaves, black, white, Asian, whatever. Everybody's been uh, there's been slaves in every culture. It's easier to dehumanize somebody who doesn't look like you. Whites do it to blacks, black do it to white, Asian do it to and you know everybody does it to everybody. So it's easier for you to say, well, it's happening to them, not to me, and not have to do anything about it. Apathy sets in, you know. Of course, you know, after a while, people say, whoa, wait a minute, you know, we got to fix this. But you know what I'm saying, you know, there's years and years of stuff could go on before people get to the point where they go, uh-uh, that's not happening. Let's get back to this video here. To their Nazi and Italian allies, it is estimated that anywhere between 200,000 and half a million people were murdered in the wow. most brutal of ways. Wow. With horrors including setting up concentration and death camps that only housed children. And much of the killing done with hand tools. In today's video, we will look at the reasons behind such a barbaric group forming and the crimes they committed and the consequences for the region. Okay. It's helpful to start with the formation of Yugoslavia. The Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes was formed in 1918 following the First World War. Old empires were split up and the map of Europe was redrawn. The Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes was created with these nationalities forming a new state from land originally controlled from the defeated Austria-Hungarian and Ottoman empires. No regard was given to just how these varied cultures were going to work together in the new state. There were many different religions, such as Islam, Orthodox Christianity, and Catholicism, 
and many more nationalities. Each of these nationalities were all pushing for self-determination, but this was largely ignored. Serbs would play a leading role in the newly formed state, as they were both the largest of the ethnic groups and had fought on the side of the victorious allied powers, whereas the conscripted Slavs and Croats fought for the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In 1929, the Serb King Alexander renamed the country the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. He established a dictatorship, abolished the constitution and dissolved parliament. This resulted in many of the politicians leaving the country in exile. Among them was Ante Palavich, the man who would go on to create the Ustasha movement. Ustasha roughly translated means uprising. The goal was to create an independent Croatia. It was pro-Catholicism and tolerant to the Bosnian Muslims in the region, who they saw as Croats who had converted to Islam under Ottoman rule. It was anti-Serb, anti-Orthodox Christian with desires to annex Serbian territory. Pavelic was clear that the methods to establish an independent Croatia would be through extreme violence. In one speech he proclaimed, the knife, revolver, machine gun and time bomb. These are the idols. These are the bells that will announce the dawning and the resurrection of the independent state of Croatia. In 1934, Alexander was assassinated in France. The murder was carried out by the Internal Macedonian Revolutionary Organization, working alongside the Eustasha. And his son and heir, Peter II, was too young. The kingdom was ruled by war of a regency. Nazi expansion in the region in the 30s encouraged the Kingdom of Yugoslavia to sign the Tripartite Pact on the 25th of March 1941 in a bid to avoid annexation. Shortly after, a British-backed coup removed the regency and placed the now 17-year-old Peter II on the throne. This action only encouraged Nazi Germany to invade Yugoslavia. See, a British-backed coup. It stuff has been going on forever, man. Everybody's been getting in everybody's business forever. And, uh, you know, when I was younger and stuff, and I heard people going into other countries and doing stuff, and that's a general statement. They go into other people's country to do stuff, you know, say to stop human rights from being violated and all of that stuff there. It's, it's gotten so bad to the point there because it, this world is uh, money hungry on steroids. You gotta question why they go in there. Because I guarantee you they wouldn't go in there if there wasn't some kind of a benefit for them and theirs. Straight up, straight up. Which fell to their control in a matter of weeks. It was often the case in newly conquered Nazi territories that puppet governments would be installed. Such was the case with Yugoslavia. The country was divided up with Italy claiming the coast and Montenegro. Landing the See? Puppet regimes, that happened a lot in South America during the 80s. You know, the, the, in that Nicaragua, we had the, uh, the Contras and the Santanistas, and you had the rebels in, uh, in, uh, in, in Peru, and you have you know, all these revolutionaries all over the place and the people who conquered them. And Russia is selling uh, one side arms, America is selling on the other side arms, and these people are just killing each other. They come in and they, uh, you see how we are like, I like a lot in the, in the historical things that happen to us along the way because nobody's doing anything innovative or different. It's all the same thing. The human psychology is not changing that much when you put it in certain circumstances and situations that it has to survive. It's as simple as that. In the north, claimed by Hungary, and in the east, claimed by Bulgaria. The Ustasha were not the first pick for a puppet state though they were enthusiastic in proving their loyalty to the Axis powers. Though the Axis powers were largely distrustful that the Ustasha would deliver what was required of them. The independent state of Croatia was formed with the Ustasha put in power by their Nazi and Italian patrons. In a bid to elevate their status as the new rulers, the Ustasha attempted to frame their ancestry as Germanic and Gothic, though this was based on fantasy and not grounded in fact. Nazi focus was not on the Balkans, but rather the Soviet Union. At this point in the war, Operation Barbarossa was in full swing. So as long as the Balkans were under control, much could be tolerated by the Axis powers. 
For Palovic, the cost of annexed land and the Axis supervision was well worth Croatian independence and domination over those seen as inferior. On the no, no, I remember as a kid watching stuff about the Nazis and stuff like that. And then people say Germany. And we sort of think that all Germans are like that. We blanket them. So as a kid, I was always sort of wary of Germans and stuff like that. Then when I really started to meet people from Germany who come there and you start realizing, hey, they're working people. A lot of them paycheck to paycheck, just like the rest of us. Ain't much of a difference. And that's a hell of a burden to live with for so many years, you know what I mean? That your leaders act like morons. And, and here's the thing, here's the thing that, that always, uh, that's always said. Why don't they just uh, uprise and take over the government and blah, 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 and all of that? That's easier said than done. Especially if the, the people in power has got all the guns and all, and, all, and all of that. They have people who are willing to carry out inhumane acts to maintain that power. Whereas you have ordinary citizens who really don't walk around with guns or nothing like that or do anything like that. And even if they do, you see, you have all these people here, it's like, we have a gun to go against the government. That's why we need our guns, uh, the second or the second amendment, blah, blah, blah. Y'all ain't gonna do nothing because that's human nature. Y'all gonna take it for centuries sometimes before you do anything. That's why, that's why places like uh, the Roman Empire last so long. That's why uh, the Ottoman Empire last so long. You know what I mean? Because yeah, you know, why don't they rise up? That's easier said than done. History proves that. 22nd of July 1941, the Ustasha government issued their racial policies, decreeing those who would be targeted in a series of deportation, forced conversions and massacres. The key targets were the Serbs, Jews and Roma peoples living within the new Croatian state. The massacres of the Serbs by the Ustasha forces started as early as 1941 in a small village called Gudovic. Around 200 Serbs were killed by firing squad by the Ustaka militia, responsible for much of the killings to come. It was not simply enough for the Ustasha to murder Serbs. Widespread reports detail the level of mutilation employed. Very often, eyes would be gouged out, ears and noses removed, and items inserted into sexual organs and bodies would be left for wild pigs to eat or to rot away. A series of concentration camps were established, notably at Jasinovitz. Nazi influence resulted in a series of laws stripping Jews and Roma of rights and property. However, in the case of Jews, they would be able to avoid persecution if they converted and gave up their religion. The Ustasha's main target would always be the Serbs. A proclamation was issued that the policy of the Ustasha was to kill a third of Serbs, deport a third, and forcefully convert a third to Catholicism. Serbs formed the majority of prisoners in Jasinovac, mainly those who refused to convert to Catholicism. Food would be sparse, either a starch or turnip soup supplemented with whatever the prisoners would be able to scavenge. This would include Okay, this is going to sound like a really strange question, but I want to hear it from your perspective. We all know political ramifications, religious ramifications, and all of that. Now, we could say all of that there, but then when you get down to the people, the nitty-gritty of the people there, what caused that mentality to be prevalent? And I ask the same thing about the Jewish people. What is it about Jewish people that people hate so much? I'm going to say the same thing about the Serbs, especially in that region, the region there. What is it about the Serbs that people hate so much? Of course, that's, that, that, that's, a, that's a complex question there because, you know, you could go in all kinds of directions with it and, and everybody's going to have a, an opinion, you know what I mean? I don't understand. There's just certain groups of people that, that seem to get messed with, especially, you know, in the last two, three hundred years or well, five 600 years of history. There's just specific people that get messed with. And it's not just people of a different color. 
people of the same color terrorize each other you know what i mean of course of course too also and i'm talking about like in africa and south america whenever you hear the powers that be say oh that's communism uh oh that's uh or oh, they uncivilized, or oh, they this, or oh, they that. You have to stop and ask yourself, why are they dehumanizing them? Is it is it that re that bad there, or are they dehumanizing them, setting them up for something else? Because when I first came to this country, one of the first questions I got asked is, do we still eat people in my country? Now you tell me, where would an idea like that come from? We're not even in the jungle anywhere. We are on a paradise island in the middle of the ocean. And that's what you're going to ask me? You don't ask me about my culture or anything like that? You see what I'm saying? So what is it about certain people? Is it because they are easily distinguished from others? Is it their language? Is it their religion? Is it past political uh, belief? Is it uh, wars from the past that harbor resentment to certain groups that create this sort of situation to be other people just test it by and let it happen because you know hey we don't like them because you understand what i'm saying let's get back to this here food leaves grass or whatever undigested food could be found in human waste prisoners would be made to work in the fields for agriculture in the brickworks or in metalworking often making weapons for the ustasha those who did not perish as a result of the horrendous conditions and disease would be systematically murdered. Whilst attempts to gas prisoners were made with gas fans similar to those used by the Nazis, there were no gas chambers at Jasinovitz. Those who were murdered were done so manually. Often this was done with a blow to the head and the bodies then dumped in the nearby rivers so that the corpses would drift up and end in Serbian territory. Sometimes, Contests were held as to which guard would be able to kill the most prisoners. Wow. One winner of such a contest was Peter Bratzica, who was reported to have personally killed between 1,100 and 1,300 people. And the weapon used by Bratzica and many of the guards was a Serb cutter. This was an agriculture knife attached to a leather band worn on the hand. This would enable the guards to slit the throats or viciously stab the wow. back of the head with great speed and with only minimum risk of injury to the wielder. The bodies that were not thrown into the river would be buried in mass graves, dug by a select group of prisoners. Many of these grave diggers would also be forced to take part in the killings. One of the darkest and most distressing of concentration camps was at Sisek, which had a separate camp for children. Thousands of children, often alone, though occasionally with their mothers, would be interned in the direst of conditions. The camp held more than 6,000 Serbian, Jewish and Roma children, aged between 3 and 16, and they were kept in old stables. Dysentery combined with a diet of gruel resulted in an estimated 1,500 children dead. Murders were routinely carried out by the guards, often by taking a child and smashing them against a wall. One survivor of the camp was Bozo Judas. He was able to survive, only as he was adopted by a local couple looking for a girl. Due to the poor conditions, Judas scavenged a dress that he would wear, and as all children were in a poor state, it was often not possible to tell the girls apart from the boys. Oh, wow. According to Judas, the children were dirty, soiled, and full of threadworms. When my future adoptive father came to the camp looking for a girl, I was near the entrance. Somehow, children sensed that the person who had come had good intentions. I held him by the legs and refused to release him. As I was in a dress, he thought I was a girl and he took me in. His new family soon realized he was not a girl, but could not bring themselves to return him to the awful conditions of the camp. Unfortunately, Judas's younger sister remained in the camp and was never seen again. All the while, there were two major forms of opposition to the Eustacia, the Chechniks and the Partisans. The Chechniks were the remnants of the royalist armed forces who attempted to fight and protect as many as they could in the name of Serbian nationalism. And the Partisans were communist-backed guerrillas who gained massive support from the population 
and fought against the Axis and Ustasha occupying forces. Largely regarded as the most successful of the anti-Axis partisan groups. At times, the Ustasha and Chekniks would collaborate against the partisans. The Chekniks seeing the communists as a bigger threat than the genocide raging around them. We will not go into too much detail on the resistance movements, as they deserve videos on their own. But I would strongly recommend you to take the time to look into these groups and the competing aims of each. What is important to note is that the barbarity of the Ustasha was able to galvanize support of the partisans against the fascists. In a report to Heinrich Himmler, it was stated, Increased activity of the partisans is chiefly due to the atrocities carried out by Ustasha units in Croatia against the orthodox population. The Ustasha committed their deeds in a bestial manner, not only against males of conscript age, but especially against helpless old people, women and children. The number of the orthodox that the Croats have massacred and sadistically tortured to death is about 300,000. Following the surrender of fascist Italy and as the areas under German control shrank, the partisans were able to make territorial gains. The Ustasha fought to retreat to Austria, attempting to escape partisan and Soviet capture. On the 21st of April 1945, with the partisans fast approaching, the Ustasha murdered the remaining prisoners that were still at Jasinovitz. On the 22nd of April, around 600 inmates attempted a revolt, but of those, only 90 managed to escape wow. and all the rest were murdered. On the day of the revolt, the Ustasha killed the 400 remaining prisoners who chose not to try to escape. The buildings, guardhouses and torture rooms were all put to the flame, leaving only ruins and the remains of countless victims. It is estimated that around 40,000 Ustasha captives were rounded up and gunned down by the partisans. Pavlic instead would make his way to Rome and with help of the Vatican was able to hide for a number of years in some of their properties. In 1948, he fled to Argentina along with around 30,000 of the Ustasha members under that. the protection of Juan Perón. In 1957, an attempted assassination left Palavich with crippling wounds. Following the fall of Perón, Palavich fled to Spain where he would die a slow death of his wounds in December of 1959, never facing justice for his litany of crimes. Even to this day, there are those who seek to deny the crimes of the Ustasha. Phrases and iconography are still chanted and displayed, with some attempting to deny the genocide altogether. Some believe that the successful creation of an independent Croatia justifies the denial of the genocide. It is important to remember that the goal of the Axis powers was to create a stable Balkans that would not impact the push east and the war with the Soviet Union. As stated in the Gestapo memo, the very crimes of the Ustasha were creating and entrenching the partisan resistance. It should also be remembered that the reason the Nazis abandoned the personal massacres committed by the Anstasgruppen was due to the psychological toll this had on the men carrying them out. The fact that this was not a problem for the Ustasha speaks to the deranged and twisted mentality of those involved. Following the Second World War, a new Yugoslavia was formed, headed by the leader of the partisans, Tito. Throughout his rule, the various ethnic and religious groups lived in a relative peace, albeit under an oppressive communist regime, though one not under the thumb of the Soviet Union that managed to remain neutral during the Cold War. Following the death of Tito, the region would once again be plunged into further genocides and armed conflicts during the Bosnian War, the horrors of which will be covered in another video. The crimes of the Ustasha highlight the dangers of those who push for a pure state, whether along religious, racial or nationalist lines. Racial and religious oppression were the tools to create their desired state was brutal violence. It is important to note that the Ustasha never had the widespread support of the Croat people. The power of the Ustasha came from their Nazi patrons, who through the use of such puppet states were able to subjugate much of Europe. Hundreds of thousands of Serbs, Jews and Roma were massacred in a bid to create a pure Croatia. 
and to appease their Axis backers. It is generally accepted that around 300,000 people were murdered by the Ustasha. However, some estimates are as high as 700,000 massacred. Wow. We must never forget the crimes of the Ustasha, and must push back against those attempting to deny their victims. At the time, the world was at war with multiple fronts engaged. The Ustasha were able to get away with so much violence as the rest of the world was preoccupied. Today, we remember those who were massacred in the Holocaust, but so too must we remember those who were massacred by the allies of Nazi Germany and fascist Italy. Wow. There's so much about that time that we don't really know about. We only hear about one, uh, one section of the whole thing, but you know, there, there's a whole lot of different people involved in that stuff there. Comment down below, tell me what you think of that. I'll leave a link in the description to this video so you can go check it out. Stop the fighting, stop the fussing. Y'all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.